Okay, welcome back, my fellow machine learners. This is Bevan. Why cross-validation? What is cross-validation? Why is it important? So, uh, in the previous videos, we started to introduce this idea that our machine learning models, for, their, for them to be valuable, they need to generalize well to new unseen data. Okay, so remember, guys, we are given a, not given, but we, we have this historical data set of some input features and some output uh, features. What we're trying to do is take a few models, say linear regression, neural network, random forest, support vector machine, and train them on this data so that we can, in a sense, chuck away the data and put the best model in our back pocket so that we can go and predict new uh, cases we will be given new unseen data so that we can make new predictions so important that when we're busy training our models they need to generalize well to new unseen data okay so we've been introducing this i've been introducing this in the previous videos of this idea of taking the entire data set and splitting it into a training and testing or validation set. So if there's our data set, right, there's our, there's our features, our input features. There's our target or our label, whether it's regression or classification, target or our label or whatever. And we took a single sample, right? We, we randomly selected, say, whatever, say 60 or 70 percent training, right? Training data set. And we had, say, for example, 30 percent test, a test set or a validation set, a validation set. And so we trained on this. We trained our models on this, whether it was, say, a neural net or a linear regression or whatever it is, random forest. We trained on there and we tested. And we tested using, if it was a, um, if it was a continuous problem, a regression problem, then most likely we would use something called mean squared error, right? The error between predictions and your actual outcome. And we found, okay, well, uh, a neural net, for example, would perform the, have the lowest mean squared error. Okay, and so then we would say, okay, our neural net then is that that is that model is that machine learning model that we want to put in our back pocket and use for any future predictions. Great. What is the problem with this idea? Right. This idea is not ideal. If our data set is not big. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about taking a single sample a single train test split you train and you test and that's it you do it once what is the problem with this idea the problem with this idea is that every time you take a sample of say 60 percent and 40 percent or 70 percent and 30 percent you are going to get high variability in your mean squared error output or any error metric there's going to be high variability one time the, the the error will be very low the other time it will be very high why is that simply because there's so much variability in the data that at one point you could choose a data set where where uh you your model just fits well and predicts well and the other time it doesn't fit well and it doesn't predict well so there's this high variability the second thing is that the, this test error tends to be worse than the error on the entire data set. Because simply you are training your model on a smaller sample of data, right? If you are able to train on the entire population, then surely your model will, be, will, will perform a lot better. But now because we're taking that entire data set and saying, hey, I only want you to see 70%, 60% of this data. Then what's going to happen is your model will just 
not perform as well. Furthermore, this predictive performance may not be a true reflection on how the model will actually perform. It is not statistically representative of the true prediction. Okay, and then I like this, what, what Goodfellow says in his book on deep learning. This makes it difficult to claim that model A, say for example in neural net, is better than another model B. For example, your support vector machine or your random forest, when we are testing and comparing models. Makes it difficult to, to say that we, when we're comparing models, this one is better than the other one. So what do we do? Well, we want to do something called resampling. Okay, resample. And I give credit to this book, Introduction to Statistical Learning, by Witten et al. Uh, it's also, you know, co-authored by, by Hasty, Professor Hasty and Professor Tip Sharani. If I can get that name right. Excellent book, Introduction to, to Statistical Learning. Okay, so what is the big picture? Let's look at the big picture of what we're trying to do. Okay, we've seen that we're trying to generalize our model. So instead of doing a single sample, we want to do multiple samples. That's the idea. In statistics, you always want to be taking multiple samples and then performing some kind of test. Okay. So in the book, Introduction to, to Statistical Learning, I'll get it right. There are two main ideas. The one is cross-validation, which is what we're going to focus on. And the second one is bootstrapping. Cross-validation has two components to it. Okay. The one is the validation set approach, which is, guys, what we've just been discussing. You take a data set, you split it into a training and a testing or validation set. It's a single grab of the data. Okay. I don't need to talk about that already. This is part of the idea of cross-validation. We have a training and a testing or validation set. But then the part that most um, machine learning practitioners use is this idea of K-fold cross-validation. This is to take your data set. And by the way, I'll go into much more detail in the next couple of videos. You take your data set of X and Y. You randomly, it's important guys. Uh, and I'll get into much more detail on this. Randomly split it into a certain number of folds. Okay. K folds. A fold. Say five folds. One, two, three, four, five. And the idea, and these are non-overlapping. Okay. So we take, we, we take our entire data set. We split it into, say, there's a hundred observations. Okay, 100 observations. We split it into equal, five equal folds, for example. Say K equals five. Okay. And what we do is we train on four of them and we test on the fifth one. And we calculate the mean squared error for that one. Then we train on, say we train on, the first time we train on one, two, three, four of these folds and we test on number five. Then the second time we train on two, three, four, and five, and we test on one, we get another mean squared error. Then we train on three, four, five, and one, and we test on two, and we get a mean squared error. Then we train on, I've forgotten now, four, five, one, and two, and we test on three, and we get another mean squared error. And then we test on Five, one, two, and three. And we test on four and we get another mean squared error. Okay. So we got these five errors and then we divide by the number of folds. One over K, the sum of all the mean squared errors. Okay. I equals one to K or one to N. Okay. So we calculate five mean squared errors, and then we divide, we get the average of that, okay? And so I'll get into all the details of that, but what this does is 
it reduces that high variability. Okay, it reduces that variance in that output. It gives us a lot more confidence in in that actual error that we we have. And it also allows us to actually let those models see all the data and test on all the data. Okay, that's so k-fold cross-validation is a powerful tool um, to improve on that single train test split that we've been doing. Okay, but I will I will dedicate uh, the next one or two videos to really dive into k-fold cross-validation. Okay, then so as I've mentioned, the one is is cross-validation, which has these two components, and then the second one is something called bootstrapping which is, again, a powerful statistical method. What is this about? Again, it's lots of resampling, right? This k-fold cross-validation is we sample, sample, test, sample, sample, test, sample, test. With bootstrapping, it's slightly different because it is overlapping samples, whereas k-fold is non-overlapping. Okay, so non-overlapping means... Um, we split our data set into its folds and we leave it as is. And we test on four of the five and then we test on that fifth and then we test on another four. And we, okay. But with bootstrapping, we repeatedly sample with replacement, with replacement from a data set. Okay. So if that is your entire data set, there's your X and Y again. Say now, there's a hundred observations. You sample a hundred observations, randomly sample. So you take one, one sample, you put it into, into your bucket, right? This is your sample bucket. You randomly put your hand into this data set and put it in there. And, and then you put it, you, then it's there, but you put it back in a sense. So you, you replace it back in there, but so now it's in there, but you put it back into the sample. Then you take another one and you put it in there and you then you put it back in and you take another one and you put it and this you do n times. And the idea behind this is it allows us to get statistical confidence in all our predictions. It helps us to determine the uncertainty associated with a model. And then you've got you've got this. Um, You've got this data set and then you carry out your training on this data set and then testing is often done in out of bag samples. So guys, I'd like to make a future video on bootstrapping. This is just to give you a, a, a big picture idea of these two ideas. Okay. Um, bootstrapping is often used in uh, bagging, which is an ensemble machine learning method. And it's also used in random forest right, which is also another ensemble method. Okay. So hopefully I don't want to go into more detail. This is the big picture. Machine learning practic practitioners mostly use this idea of k-fold cross-validation. And I forgot the one of the most important things is for this is also used mainly in hyper parameter tuning, which we'll get to in a future video. Okay. All right, I think that's all. Remember, um, if this doesn't make sense, remember to go and watch the previous videos so that you can see how we got here. But in the, in the future videos, we're going to be talking mainly about cross-validation. Okay, bye for now.